Mario parents. I wanted to share with you some different games that your child can play to practice their fact fluency. So you'll notice that my heading says games for practicing fact fluency. And so of course, I'm a second grade teacher. So your child is working on mastering their addition and subtraction facts to 20. However, one thing about all of these games is that you can play these games to work on any type of fact fluency. So for example, if you have a first grader, they are going to be working on their subtraction facts to sub addition and subtraction facts to 10. And if you have a third grader or a fourth grader, they might be working on mastering their multiplication and division facts. So even though your second grader will be using these games to practice their addition and subtraction facts to 20, if you have other kids, you can totally modify these games to just work on whatever type of fact fluency your other kids are working on mastering. So we'll go ahead and start with the first game that I have up here called Zap It. And if you watched my video about how to teach sight words to your child, I actually talk about this game called Zap It and how you can use it for, um, for sight words, but I really mostly use it in class for addition and subtraction fact fluency. So I'll explain how it works. It's a really simple game. In class, what I will have is I will have a jar or a cup full of popsicle sticks. And on the end of each popsicle stick, it will have, um, so I might have like a jar just for the addition facts or a jar just for subtraction facts. And so the addition jar at the bottom of each popsicle stick, it will have an addition problem like five plus seven or seven plus eight. And it'll have all of the addition facts, but a couple of them will say, zap it. And it's the same thing for subtraction. It'll have all the subtraction problems and a couple of the popsicle sticks will say, zap it. And you play either with two people or more and you go around in a circle and you pull out a popsicle stick and you solve the problem that you have. And it's not a timed game. So it's possible that your child will know the fact right away or they might have to think about it and that's fine. But the way that it works is that if you get your problem correct, you get to keep your popsicle stick. Uh, however, whenever you pull out a popsicle stick that says zap it, you lose all of your pieces. And so anytime a person pulls zap it, you would create um, like a place to put all of those zap it um, popsicle sticks so that the game will eventually come to an end. And it's a lot of fun as the kids anticipate whether or not they'll get the zap it popsicle stick. So I realize that you probably don't have popsicle sticks at home. So you're welcome to buy popsicle sticks at, um, at a local store, but you can also play the exact same game just with cut up sheets of paper. So you would just get a bowl and you can cut up strips of paper and on each sheet of paper, you would write um, either an addition or a subtraction fact um, and then some of those would say zap it and you can just like fold those pieces and put them in a big bowl so that you can't see what they say and your kid would put pick their hand in and get one out and it's a really simple game but I have been playing this game with my kids I think literally every year of my seven years of teaching and even though it's really simple I think it might be the most entertaining game I've ever played with kids. So this is one that I have a lot of experience with. Um, so I'll talk about the next one. And the next two are games that I've seen on the internet since we've started homeschooling. And I think that these were just games that families were getting creative with as we are working on learning from home. So hopscotch math is where you first make a game of hopscotch with chalk on your driveway. So it would go one to 10. And what you can do is put on some music on your phone and your child will start hopscotching. And then when you stop the music, 
they have to stop a little bit like musical chairs in that sense and then whatever number they're landing on you start with that number so let's say they're standing on one foot on a nine and then you would keep going and then stop the music and then you get another number so let's say when you stop it they're on a four then your child would have to add nine plus four and so when they add nine plus four they can do that mentally to just solve nine plus four or if you're working with chalk they can solve their problem so like on the driveway but if you wanted to do this with subtraction fact fluency you as the adult would pick a number like you could just pick a number in the teens like 15 and have your child hopscotch until you either say stop or stop playing music and then whatever number they land on they have to subtract that problem from 15. so if they landed on a seven they would have to do 15 minus 7 until they can play hopscotch again. So that's just kind of like a simple, fun way that your kid can get some energy out while also practicing their fact fluency. And so once again, the same thing would go if you had an older kid. If you wanted to do this for multiplication facts, it would be the same thing, except that whatever two facts they land on, instead of adding those facts, they would multiply them. So if you want to keep this game in your back pocket for next year when you have a third grader and they're working on multiplication, you can totally use this game next year. And then the last one, I didn't know what this would be called, so I just called it Toss Math. But what you can do is, I've seen this done with both sheets of paper as well as plates, and or like paper plates, I mean and either on the paper plate or on a sheet of paper, you would write the numbers one through nine, or you could do one through 10, and those would each number would be on its own sheet of paper or its own paper plate, and you would put those on a wall, kind of like you would have um, like on your phone, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then also 10 if you wanted to. And you would want to do this in a place in your house where you don't have a lot of um, furniture and your kid just rolls up a piece of paper and throws the ball at the numbers. And so if you wanted to do subtraction, it would be kind of like the hopscotch game. You could pick a number in the teens, like 15, and then they would throw their paper ball at one of those numbers and whatever number it lands on, they would subtract it. So that's just another way that you can kind of have fun and get some energy out at home while also practicing your addition and subtraction fact fluency. And then finally, the last one is to get creative and make your own. Your child is more than welcome to come up with their own game for practicing addition and subtraction fact fluency. So, all right, parents, thanks for your time. And I hope that these games help you get some energy out at home and practice your addition and subtraction facts. Bye!